And guys, in this next news story, these are the teen killers jailed following the murder of Kyle Hackland up in the northwest. Kyle, who was 17, was stabbed to death in broad daylight after being caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. He was targeted because of his association with a friend who one of his killers blamed after he was set up in a drugs deal gone wrong. A gang of four young men drug dealing set upon Kyle in Withington after they saw him walking with his friend. His friend fled when he saw them, but Kyle, who knew all four, appeared to be taken by surprise by the brutal attack. Safari Smith, who was then aged 16, stabbed him before another two, Yusuf Sessi and Louis Ludford, both aged 18, joined in as Kyle was punched and kicked. Manchester Crown Court heard that 17-year-old Alfie Benson drove the killers to and from the scene in a stolen VW Golf. After leaving Kyle to die, in a driveway on South Lee Road at around half 11 in the morning on November the 22nd last year, the four, some of who claimed to be Kyle's friends, arranged to be taken into hiding. Following the trial which concluded in June, Smith, Sesse and Ludford were found guilty of murder and Benson was convicted of manslaughter. The four can be pictured for the first time after they were sentenced this morning. Sesse, Smith and Ludford were all detained at His Majesty's pleasure, the equivalent of a life sentence for juvenile Smith will serve a minimum of 19 years, Sesse and Ludford will serve a minimum of 22 and 21 years respectively. While Benson was sentenced to 12 years in prison, a judge hit out at the four when he locked them up. Judge Alan Conrad Casey told them, Kyle Hackland was a similar age to some of you. He had done nothing wrong at all to deserve what happened to him. He had played no part in any robbery of any of you. Hypocritically, some of you claim that he was your friend. Friends do not behave as you did. Attacking him, stabbing him in the back and leaving him bleeding and dying on the pavement. The judge also warned of the terrible consequences of knife crime as yet again another knife was lost. The judge added, yet again this court has to deal with a case involving young defendants and a young victim. A case where a promising life has been taken and young offenders face very long periods in custody. All because, as is sadly so common, the four of you chose to go out with knives and to use them. To reduce knife crime depends upon the involvement of many agencies. It involves promoting an increased awareness of the terrible consequences and the damage all around. From this court's point of view, what can be done is that the seriousness of the behaviour is marked by appropriate sentences so that a message will go out to others minded to carry and use knives. During the sentencing, Kyle's mother paid tribute to her son she said on November the 22nd, I received a phone call that changed my life forever. Our lives are shattered and will never be the same again. To those who murdered my son and those who helped cover it up, I want you to understand what your actions have done to me, my family and Kyle. He was our absolute world. I cannot face the fact that he is never coming home. She said I will never be the same person that I was before Kyle died. I still hope this isn't real and he will walk through my front door. She also claimed her son's killers had shown a complete lack of respect during the murder trial, allegedly they'd been laughing and joking in court and she said it was unbelievable behaviour. She had to stand there and say a car was their friend but then laugh and joke is disgusting and shows a complete lack of respect. I've had to listen to these boys lie in court about what had happened, staring at me, not even admitting it, even though it was all on CCTV. I will never forgive you. If you can do that to your own so-called friend, what else are you capable of? He literally stabbed him in the back. Kyle wouldn't have hurt anyone. You acted like my son's life meant nothing. You will never know how many lives you have destroyed. After the hearing, Senior Investigating Officer Detective Chief Inspector David Moore said, This is another heartbreaking example of how carrying a knife can have devastating consequences in a matter of seconds. Our thoughts as a force are once again with Carl's loved ones who will have to continue to live with the pain, but hopefully this can be eased in some way with the conviction of the killers. Officers in our major incident team have worked tirelessly to bring justice and in our role, we are reminding any young person willing to carry a knife to put it down and think twice before doing so. It's not worth it and it could ultimately cost yours and other people's lives. I'm just going to go through what actually happened that morning. So as we know, the tragedy occurred at around half 11 on November the 22nd last year. So there was a gang who peddled cannabis on the streets and they swore revenge after Cissé was robbed of £1,000 in cash in a bungled drug deal and they blamed one of Kyle's friends. 
Initially, the gang were wearing bellies and carrying knives smashed up a Mercedes in the mistaken belief it belonged to one of Kyle's friends, but tragedy struck shortly afterwards when they subsequently spotted him and Kyle walking through the Withington area. Cissé Ludford and one of the 17-year-olds jumped out of the stolen VW Golf they were cruising around in to confront Kyle's friend who was also armed with a large knife, but he fled the scene, leaving Kyle behind. The prosecutor Mark Ryan Casey said it is clear that all four intended to exact revenge. They were armed with knives and had balaclavas or face coverings and they were searching South Manchester intending to attack Kyle's friend or tragically for Kyle Hacklin, anyone associated with him. He added that one of the defendants could be heard saying, Chef him, chef him, before another raised his left hand above his head to deliver a forceful blow into his back with a knife before pulling it out. The prosecutor continued, Kyle was then dragged into the driveway and was pushed against some wheelie bins before surrounded and stabbed again. The occupants of the house looked out the window to see the attackers windmilling him as Kyle was trapped against the wheelie bins. He was seen curling up and trying to protect himself as he was being punched and kicked with one of the attackers holding a large hunting knife which had a jagged blade. As the defendants drove off, the prosecutor said Kyle lifted up his top and was seen feeling towards his lower back while struggling to remain on his feet. When a concerned passersby asked if he was alright, Kyle replied, I've been stabbed before he collapsed and he never regained consciousness after that moment. I just want to say, rest in peace, Kyle, and my condolences go out to your family. So the killers then gave themselves up to police after Kyle's friend messaged their names to Kyle's brother and officers raided their homes. All gave no comment in interview, but when Ludford asked why he'd surrendered, he replied, use lick my gaff up. The court heard the 17-year-old driver off the golf had 23 previous convictions on his record, including robbery and assault, and had been given a referral order by a youth court for motoring offences just 24 hours before the murder. And guys, in this next news story, a man who attacked someone and left him with serious head injuries in a dispute over drugs has been jailed for more than two years. Michael Locker was locked up this week with Cambridgeshire Police welcoming the sentence handed out. The court heard how Locker assaulted the victim at a house in Huntington at around quarter past three on Saturday the 22nd of July after arranging to meet there. The victim pulled inside the house and punched in the face before being dragged into a parking area where he tried to call for help on his mobile phone. Locker grabbed the phone from his hand and smashed it twice into his face and head before pulling the victim's t-shirt over his face. The man tried to escape but tripped over and Locker tried to kick him in the face before the pair parted. He suffered a fractured cheekbone and swelling to the back of his head. Locker had also punched the victim twice in Oxmoor at 12 o'clock on Sunday the 18th of June, leaving him with a broken nose then slapped into the face at around 2 o'clock on Tuesday the 18th of July, so that's three times. There are also numerous incidents of harassment where Locker would turn up at the victim's address unannounced and sit outside in his car. He also drove up and down the victim's road. In a prepared statement interview, Locker said the victim had been selling bad weed. Yesterday, Locker was jailed for two years and three months having pleaded guilty to two counts of assault and one count of each of inflicting GBH with intent, criminal damage and harassment. After the sentencing was handed out, DC Leah Beckett investigated the Cambridgeshire Police said this was a terrifying campaign of violence and intimidation which left the victim with serious injuries so I'm glad Locker has faced justice for his actions. So guys, there's a couple of stories coming out of the streets of the UK. It's your boy GC. Keep it locked, keep it real.